Hey guys, Scott here. So I was talking to one of you guys uh, this week and they asked me, so the, I, it occurred to me through this conversation that some of you are amazed that I sleep at all because of the amount of work that I do. And others have no idea that I work at all and think that I live a life of leisure. And obviously reality is somewhere in between, but it occurred to me from this conversation that people often have absolutely no idea at all how busy I am. So I uh, figured I would share that little bit of my life with you so you have some way of visualizing what's going on in my life as as when you're watching these shows. What, what are you really encountering? So the conversation came up because someone was coming into town and they were hoping to get together with me and I really do try whenever you guys are in town. I do want to get together with you. Anyone who has gotten together with me know that it is very hard to do so. Finding a, you know, I can't put things on my calendar way ahead of time and I'll you'll understand why as we go through. Uh, but you know, I don't make money from this show and I do have real work to do. So that takes precedence. I can't completely interrupt my life just because tourists are coming into town or even people who are relocating are coming into town. I do want to meet everyone. I love, 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 love my community. You guys are fantastic, but I do have to put food on the table and provide for my family as well. And I do have to make this show. And if I'm not careful, I can spend all my time hanging out with you guys, which would be fun. That'd be great. And even if you guys are buying me food and coffee all the time, which I really appreciate, it's it's difficult if I'm just going out and having a meal with someone um, that I spend hours and, and that takes away from my, my time of the day. So I'm going to explain a little bit about my day so you understand this. But he was coming into town. And he's like, hey, can we get together Saturday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon? And the, this came up as an issue. Had he not had this, this probably wouldn't have, have come up as a coordination point. Um, but he, he just sent me an email and said, I'm going to be mo traveling. I don't have a phone. I don't have a laptop. I have no way to communicate with me. I'll just go to this place and wait for you at this time. And that was it. There was no time for me to confirm. There was no way, there's no, I can't check my schedule that far ahead of time. So I have no way to say that I can reliably be there. I don't want to send him to a place and have him just sit and wait and be like, oh, I thought you were coming. I'd be like, how could you think I was coming? Right? Like I had no way to, to, you know, I can't put things on my calendar that far ahead of time. Um, because so one thing is we're going to get to this, but so then he was like surprised that I was busy and it really took me by surprise that he thought, I had free time, like that I could possibly do that because just doing this show alone should use up all my possible time. So let's talk about this. One, living in Nicaragua, especially as an expat, there are a few things you need to be aware of. And we don't talk about this too much. I have mentioned it. We're not hiding it. But life is all about interruptions. And tons of things seem to happen in Nicaragua based on interrupts rather than schedules. And in for the most part, this is a good thing, I think. But there's definitely times that it's frustrating. And one of those things is because I'm a resident, you never know when Migracion, for example, is going to need to see me. And then I have to go. I have to jump, right? It's very rare. But for example, last week, Migracion needed to see us. And so we very quickly had to throw the kids in the car and go spend an unplanned day dealing with that. Or yesterday in real time, uh, maybe it was two days ago, I had uh, we had a lightning strike and I needed to go deal with the fact that some things were, were burned out. Physical stuff we owned got burned and uh, Saeed and I had to run to Managua and deal with the shopping. And that took all day with no warning, right? And so, so those are things that I could lose a day just like that with no control over it just because of those things. So even if I was idle, I don't have the control to schedule something out blindly in the future. I don't know anyone who does, in fact. So, so that caught me off guard to begin with, that I've never known a person who could do their scheduling in such a way where, yeah, of course, if a, if a true emergency arose, of course you're not going to make it. Oh, you had a car accident? You had, a, you had a heart attack? Well, yeah, we don't expect you to show up. No one does. But to schedule something blindly and be like, yeah, we're not going to coordinate. We'll just, we'll just hope that you're able to agree to the time and come. I have not known someone my entire adult life who has that kind of flexibility in their life. I can only imagine I'm being pictured as a retiree who has literally nothing going on and is, is just available all the time, uh, which I don't, I don't know any retirees who have that kind of flexible schedule, but I can see someone who isn't retired imagining a retiree having absolutely nothing and being able to just drop everything at any moment. But living in Nicaragua, I can assure you that even the retirees from time to time have things they have to do. And life is just not super predictable when you live in Nicaragua. So people tend to be like, I'm showing up at your house right now. Are you there? Let's go out right now. Are you available? That tends to be how things work just because of how Nicaraguan life is. So that's the first piece. Nicaraguan life has a tendency to not be schedulable very much. And that I think throws people off. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm not really complaining about it. I am a little. But for the most part, 
Uh, it's just different. Um, as an American living in the United States, I could pretty often say I'm going to block off a piece of my Saturday afternoon and I'm pretty confident that it's going to remain clear. That would almost always be the case. But in Nicaragua, I absolutely can't do that. Now, part of it is that I'm a business owner here. So sometimes business stuff comes up. That's far more than personal stuff. There can be a suddenly something's happened with the business and I have to go deal with it right then. Saturday afternoon happens to be a busy time when you have restaurants on the beach. And while I don't deal with them directly, and that throws some of you off as well, people have a tendency to think that I live at the beach, which I don't, and that I directly manage the restaurants and hotels. I don't, that I'm there all the time hanging out. I'm not. It's very rare for me to be there. If you go there looking for me, assume you won't find me. I can't believe how often people do find me, considering how rarely I'm there. I can only imagine that tons and tons of you are there all the time and don't say anything and are just surprised that I'm not there. But there's no reason to expect me there. It is super rare. Uh, and, and I have multiple places that I go. So which one you'd be at, I, I don't know. Um, so it's really, I, I'm often surprised by these things. But I know when you're watching the show, people get this vision of what my life must be like, and it's not necessarily accurate. So simply by living in Nicaragua, we have this first problem that we just can't schedule things very often with reliability. The number of times that a surprise thing comes up is just I can't describe how often it is. It's so much. But then the second thing is, because I'm a business owner here, I have all these obligations that often come up, and generally they come up on the weekends because that's the busy time for the businesses here. So that's not a weekend in the sense that other people see it as the downtime of the week. For me, it's often the busy time of the week. And I never once, in all the time that I've lived here, not had my weekends specifically scheduled for things. That's any time I'm meeting with you. And, and please don't anyone take this as a don't try to get together with me please do try to get together with me. I love meeting you guys. I just want to make it clear that I am busy and please don't be upset if it's a struggle to schedule with me. And please don't be upset if I have, if it becomes clear that I have very little control of my schedule because I have very little control of my schedule and I'll keep going and explain why all this is, but I have very little ability to guarantee a time. So if you're, you're making a huge effort to come see me, be aware that the failure rate of getting to meet with me is very high. Uh, and if you do manage to meet with me, anyone who has, which many of you have, you know you, it's probably like we keep moving the time and we try a bunch of different things and we don't necessarily know where we're gonna be able to get together because I, my life is very unpredictable. And that's cool and I like the adventure of life, but because meeting with you guys is something I want to be able to do, and often you're scheduling trips to Leon to do it, having this context will make it easier for you to be able to do that with me. And so please do, do not absolutely take the, any of this away as I don't want to meet with people. That is completely untrue. I love getting together with you guys, whether it's for food or coffee or beers, hanging out, inviting you to go do stuff with us. It's super fantastic. So it's and, and very meaningful because most of you live very far away. So so all that's great. And I love being able to put you guys on the show from time to time. Like Jimmy got on. Like that was super cool. There's there's all kinds of great things. I just want you to know what the context is. Okay, so all of that is just my living in Nicaragua bit, and it already makes life kind of busy. But there's plenty of free time if that was the only things. Now I make this show every day. That, for some of you, is like, how do you do that? Anyone who's tried to be a YouTuber generally reacts in a, how is it possible that you have enough hours in the day to make this show? And so for some people, and I talk to YouTubers, right, because being in this space, I know a number of YouTubers, and we talk about our workflows and stuff, and talking to other YouTubers, often they're like, I, if this was the only thing I did, I could not turn out a show like you do. The amount of content and the amount of editing is so time-consuming that most people can't do it. It's just a volume that, that people can't handle. So that, in theory, should trigger, like if you're seeing my shows, I put out about an hour of content per day. Well, if I put out an hour of content, that means guaranteed I had to record it for an hour. But I also had to edit. Anything that I post has to be edited at least two times, if not 10 times, generally not. No, it's much closer to two to three times. But the, if it's an hour long material, I minimum is two hours to edit it. So that's three hours of my day already. And remember, the normal people are only awake for 16 hours a day. Three hours of my day guaranteed has to be just getting the video recorded and edited. But I don't just record and edit. It's not that simple. I have to record, then I have to upload and back it up and do all that. And while I can do other things while that's happening, it, it has to happen and takes time and, and it means that things can't just go one from another. Once it's backed up, then I have to download it to the right computers and get it ready. That takes more time, it's more steps. So again, I can do other things while that's going on, 
but I have other things to do and it means I can't just be super efficient. Once I get it downloaded, then I got to do all the editing. Once the editing's done, so that's the three guaranteed hours. Once the editing's done, I have to render it. So then I have to wait. And again, while I can do other things, I'm stuck waiting for that. And then I have to upload it. That takes time. And then I have to do all of the social media stuff that goes along with it. I have to do the titles and thumbnails. Mostly that's just handing it off to Valentina. Thank you. But still work. Uh, I got to do all the tags. I got to write the descriptions. I got to do the, the, the different things for YouTube that they require. I've got it. There's just all that's got to be done. Got to get it up. And, and, and that's an everyday thing every single day for all those hours. And so that is about an entire job all in, in and of itself. But I also have other channels. So I'm doing this for multiple channels. So I'm easily doing more than a full-time job seven days a week just for my YouTube channels. People who know YouTube are like, yeah, of course you are. You're doing way more than that. I can't even fathom it because I'm my own editor. I'm picking all my own music, coming up with all my own, uh, you know, subscribe here and buttons and effects. Every single thing is being done by me. I have nobody helping me with any of this. So except for the thumbnails, everything is coming through me. And then when you think about it, on Thursdays, normally, I try to do a live show for five to eight hours. That's an entire seventh of my week. That's all extra on top of the other things. So seven days a week, I'm making multiple videos a day. Plus, I have my podcast, which I do very rarely, but I have podcasts that are going on as well. Um, I have a total of 12 YouTube channels and three podcasts. And uh, uh, then I do the live stream which I try to do for several hours a week. It's it, That alone is a full-time job for one day of the week. So we're already well over full-time just doing the YouTube stuff, and it's exhausting, but I love doing it. it. It's not stressful for me. It is fun. Getting to engage with you guys is fantastic. There's so many positive things about it. Zero complaints. Zero. Negative complaints. I'm super happy doing this, right? I'm not, I'm not worried about not making money on it, yeah, it loses money in theory, but it's also mostly paying for itself and gives me an excuse to have all this cool tech and cameras and stuff. Super happy. So no complaints. Love getting together with you guys. It's all positive. It's just that my schedule is crazy busy, so you have to appreciate that it's really taking a lot of time. Then the final thing, and this is what throws a lot of people off. Those who watch my show all the time know this, but I, I'm a senior manager in an international consulting firm, and we do tech and business, so it's super uninteresting to people on this channel 99% of the time, but we're an international company. I'm working with teams in the US, Mexico, Nicaragua, Bolivia, Argentina, right? I'm dealing with teams from early in the morning till late at night. We work on a typical day. My teams are active about 18 hours of the day, and as one of the senior people, I'm needed all day, every day. Last night, I was out recording the live stream of Larry Emerson performing at the Simple Beach Lodge. While that was going on, I was on another phone in the background, constantly helping troubleshoot for customers in the US. Right, so I was working, even though that was late at night, I was working all that time. And so I put in generally about 80 hours a week working for uh, the business. And, and I love my job and it's great and it lets me live down here. I have all this flexibility because of it. It lets me travel. It has been an amazing career, no complaints, but I'm ex people just don't understand. I'm working on average about 20 hours a day, seven days a week. And so every time that I'm doing something, I'm always trying to find ways to double up. Like last night, we did a live stream while working. So that's great. I actually did a live stream and recorded a concert for Nika Roomba at the same time while working for the consulting firm. When I had to run to Managua the other day, we filmed in the car on the way. We filmed at places that we were. We grabbed different footage to use for different things. I have to be super unbelievably efficient with my time and do multiple things at once. So when I'm taking time off to meet with someone, I have to carve that time out of all these things. And every single one of these things has the potential to have an interrupt happened. Like last night, I didn't plan on working for a client while I was doing the recording. I was planning on a nice casual evening. It was a friend's birthday party. So we were planning on being able to hang out, record the show and do all this fun stuff. But instead I had to deal with it because it was a major, not a major outage, but it was a customer outage and it needed to be fixed. And we got it fixed and everything was okay. But my team wasn't able to handle it completely on their own. I had to jump in and that used up a bunch of my time and interrupted my evening. So it's, it's easy to, because of all the different things that I do, 
I don't get interrupted because of the show under normal circumstances, but it's happened. But normally it is that everything else in my life has all these interrupts and all these really difficult scheduling things. And then on top of all of that, I have kids that I try to spend time with. We try to play video games together every day. We try to spend time together and we can't every day, right? And it's very frustrating for me that I don't have enough time to always see them, but they do a lot of things on their own too. So we try to schedule it so that they're doing the things they want to do on their own when I'm not available and vice versa. So we, we do spend lots of time hanging out and I work really hard to put in lots of family time um, and generally are able to, but that's something I'm trying to, so every time, like, it, so the biggest thing that people don't realize, if you're trying to get together with me during daylight, that means anytime it's daylight, I'm trying to film. If I'm not filming, it's because something else has interrupted my fil filming. If I could, and I never can, it'll never happen. If I could, I would film all the daylight hours. So there's no such thing as a time when it's daylight that if I do something that I'm not taking it away from my planned or hoped recording time. That doesn't mean I can't do it. That doesn't mean we won't do it. Doesn't mean I don't appreciate getting together with you guys even during the day. It's just I am fighting for daylight to do Nicaragua recordings every single day. And that's just part of my challenge and that's fine. But when someone says, hey, let's get together at three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm assuming they know it's daylight. They know I can, I don't have enough. There's no possible way I have enough time to do all the filming and editing and uploading stuff that I do in a day. So they must intrinsically know that they're cutting into my schedule and that's okay, but they must know that. But the reality is they had no idea. They thought I was just retired and had nothing to do and that this took no time, I think. And so that's why I want to convey that so that you have an appreciation for how busy I am. Most people in my life are like, how is anyone as busy as you? Like, how do you do that? And, uh, but a lot, of, a lot of you guys don't have that connection to me. And I imagine that you realize how busy I must be given that I'm working a full-time job, doing this show, have 12 shows, all these different things. But if you're not looking at all those pieces and you just hop on, you may have no idea at all. So I just wanted to give that plus. Plus, you know, we have a lot of social obligations. We try to go out with friends all the time. This is Nicaragua. We're here to be social. So I'm constantly at social engagements. Last night, I had two social engagements. Uh, tonight, I have three Plus overlapping ones, I almost every day I have to pick and choose between the things that we do, even when it's getting away from work. And often we pick things based on, at the last second, what work will allow us to do based on just what's going on for the day. So, and there's every day is surprises. There's no such thing as a planned day. Like last night, I thought I was done. We were ready to head out to a social engagement. At the last second, a major customer said, ooh, we really need to talk to you right now. We have an account question. And they, and I'm like, is this a tomorrow thing? And they're like, no, can it be now? It was all good stuff. They wanted to do more business with us, but they needed information right away. I had to get up early this morning, do the same call again for more information, right? And it's just part of being in business, but I don't have that kind of control to be like, nah, I'm just going to take time off. I don't have that luxury. Um, not with being able to maintain my job and career and lifestyle and being able to afford to do this show. And while it may seem like, boy, can't you just cut back on some of that? Sure, but they all the things depend on each other. If I didn't have this great job, I wouldn't be able to put in the time to doing this show. I'd need to find some other way to support my family, which would be fine. But then all these things that I like doing, I wouldn't be able to do. So having a busy schedule, maintaining a really tight schedule and, and fitting in all these different things is something I have to do every day. Again, I'm not complaining. Love what I do, and I love getting together with you guys. I just need you guys to have an appreciation or an understanding that my schedule is not my own. I don't control very much of it. And uh, uh, anytime, especially during daylight, if I'm doing stuff, chances are there's two things. Anytime that I would have something free, someone schedules time with me because they've been trying to get time with me. So there's always people fighting for my schedule, which I understand. Anytime it's daylight, I'm trying to record for the show. There's never once been an exception to that uh, in, in three years. So there just isn't enough daylight time in the day to deal with all the things because you have to stop and think between the, the shows and stuff. I just can't record enough in a day. And there's always things that I have to do being scheduled and things popping up that I don't plan on and work emergencies that come up. Plus, just normal workload has to be done. So that's just my description of what my day is like so you guys can kind of internalize what it means when you see me out somewhere. And again, feel free to come say hi, schedule time to come meet with me, whatever. Just just be aware of, of how hard I'm fighting to be able to get that time uh, to be able to come see you. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys next time.